Hi guys, this tutorial video is going to show you um, example problems kind of like the third problem on the quiz. Basically we're going to use some limit facts to create a graph. For all of the examples I'm about to do, there are multiple correct answers. So pay close attention to what your graph has to look like. And I'm going to try and also show you different ways you could draw a graph that would also be correct. The instructions are to sketch a graph that satisfies all of the conditions listed below. And when they say conditions, they're talking about these five limits. So each of these five limits is telling you something different about the graph that you're supposed to sketch. The key is that you need to be able to interpret this notation in order to understand what has to be true about your graph. I would recommend while you're getting used to this, actually interpreting it in words on the page so that then when you go to draw your graph, you don't have to rethink about the limit notation. You can just use your notes. This is what that would look like. So the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x equals 1. That means as my x gets closer to 3, the y value gets closer to 1. Well, basically, in my mind, that means that the function is going to have a point at 3, 1 or possibly a hole. And that's just because I remember that we don't necessarily know if at 3 the function equals 1. But basically this limit's talking about a point or a hole. Now the next two limits are one-sided limits. This is talking about at negative 5 from the positive side, and this is talking about negative 5 from the negative side. So these are one-sided limits. Furthermore, the next two limits have answers that are infinite, now remember when infinity is here at the end, we're talking about y value being positive or negative infinity. When the y value gets really large or really small, that's kind of like the y axis going up to the top or going down to the bottom. These two are telling me about vertical asymptotes. In fact, it has a vertical asymptote at the number negative 5, at the x value negative 5. Next, I have a different situation where my infinity is in the x position and the y value is constant. When we hold y value constant and send x to infinity or negative infinity, these are talking about horizontal asymptotes. And be really careful because you're going to be tempted to say, oh, it's a horizontal asymptote at infinity. Well, no, actually, this has a horizontal asymptote at 2 and a different horizontal asymptote at negative 2. So let's be more specific. The horizontal asymptote that goes to 2 is at positive infinity, in other words, on the right. And the negative 2 is when x goes to negative infinity, so that's on the left of the graph. Let's try and turn these notes into a graph. So the point at 3, 1 is pretty easy, and I'll start there. Here's 3, 1, and I'm just going to put a little circle right there. I don't know if it's open or closed. It actually doesn't matter. But I know that when I draw the curve, it's going to go through that point. Next, my vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes, usually we'd use a dotted line. And since both of these limits are talking about a vertical asymptote, oh dear, I can't speak. A vertical asymptote at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to put my dotted line in. This dotted line is not part of the graph. It's something that's going to help me draw the graph. Now we have to be even more specific. When we approach this dotted line from the right, the y values go to positive infinity. In other words, up here at the top, my graph is going to go to infinity. I don't know what's happening in the middle, but I'm just going to draw the end because as long as my end looks like that, then I've satisfied the first condition. Similarly for the second one, this is coming from the left and going to negative infinity y values. So on the left of this line, I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote way down here. All right, last little pieces here. On the right side of the graph, we have a horizontal asymptote at 2. So I'm going to go to the right-hand side, and I'm going to go up to 2, and I'm going to draw a horizontal asymptote, which means just the end goes that direction. And same thing for negative 2 on the left-hand side. Here's negative 2, here's my leftward-facing horizontal asymptote. 
Now, as long as I connect all of these elements, I will have a graph that satisfies these conditions. There are a million correct ways and a couple incorrect ways to do this. First of all, you will need to go in order because the, the really big incorrect way to do this would be to cross over it. So like if I tried to go through and connect there and then I came back to connect these, I would end up with not one function but a couple crossing lines. So I recommend going left to right. The leftmost condition I have to meet is this line. Next after that line, I'm gonna try and connect it to this one down here. So it seems pretty easy to just draw a connecting line like that, and that's the start of my function. Now, I know that asymptotes mean it goes down forever, so I'm gonna jump over the asymptote line and pick up my function with this arrow, and I need to connect this arrow to the circle. Now, I could just kind of directly connect the arrow like this if I wanted to, or I could go down here and go up and go down and draw myself a little squiggly line. Either way, there's a lot of correct things to do. Keeping it simple, I've just drawn it like this, but it's not wrong to do something different in the middle as long as you end up at this hole. And then you have to continue from the hole on the other side, otherwise the limit doesn't exist. And this hole needs to eventually go up here and turn into an asymptote. Again, I could have gone way down or way up and it still would have been correct. Let's try one together. This example has four conditions. Pause the video to write these down and sketch your graph, and see if you can identify what each of the four limits are telling you about the graph. Great, so hopefully you were able to identify that this one's a vertical asymptote, and it's actually going up to the top. This one's a point or maybe a hole, and this one's a horizontal asymptote, and I've just added that it's on the left because it's a negative infinity. The last one may have given you trouble, Go back to the meaning. Always go back to the meaning instead of memorizing stuff. The meaning of this is saying as x goes to positive infinity, which means we're talking about the right-hand side of the graph, y goes to positive infinity as well. In other words, the bigger x gets, the bigger y gets. Graphically, that means your x values are going this way at the same time your y values are going this way. So it means you're going to end up increasing on the right side. This is actually just telling you that you have positive infinity right end behavior. In other words, at some point, sorry, this is, a, this is not top, it's positive infinity. At some point, your graph goes up and never comes back down. Let's go ahead and translate this into some marks on the graph. I'll pause while you do it. Awesome. I wonder if maybe you got this far and then got stuck. I've got my right end behavior, so I've taken care of this, and the hole is pretty easy. But the asymptotes, I know there's a vertical asymptote at 1 and a horizontal at 4, and I even know that the 4 horizontal asymptote is going to be on this side. You have to make a choice, actually, on which side of the dotted line you're going to draw your asymptote. For the horizontal asymptote here, the truth is you can actually draw it on either side you like as long as it connects to this dot. Now, there's a common misconception, which is that some people believe an asymptote can never be crossed. You're allowed to cross the line of an asymptote as long as at the end of the function, it doesn't cross. So this function's never gonna go down after a certain point. But it would be perfectly fine for me to draw the asymptote on the top and then just cross the asymptote to come down and connect to the line. Or you could draw the asymptote on the bottom. With vertical asymptotes, actually, you don't have a choice the way that you do with horizontal asymptotes. When I say that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x equals infinity, this implies that both the right and the left side limits equal infinity. In other words, it has to have asymptotes on both sides. Otherwise, I would have just written a one-sided limit for the vertical asymptote. Since I wrote a normal limit, you can assume that both sides equal the same, which is why you really have to draw the asymptote here and here. Okay, that should fill in the blanks. Now we just have to connect the dots. Use my trick of going left to right, and let's see what you come up with. Great, I'm going to model mine. So I start on the left side. I know that this line has to connect to that zero. So I'm going to go something like this. 
And then I know that this hole, which I should not have called a zero, this hole is going to come and it's going to end up at the top. It doesn't matter how quickly I go up. In fact, I'm feeling playful, so I'm going to go up and down and then do one of these things. But eventually, it ends up there. This asymptote picks up again, and I know that there's going to be a positive end behavior. It's okay for me to cross the asymptote if I want to. I can go down as far as I like, but eventually we're going to go up like that. Now, obviously you could have gone straight up here. You could have come from the bottom. Lots of choices you had to make, but check that the purple things are consistent because those are the details that matter. I added a little question here that says state the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of your graph. It's really important that we're keeping x and y straight. Robert asked about this today in class. What he was saying was that there's kind of a flip. Normally a vertical line we think of as a y, but when we write the equation of a vertical asymptote, we actually name it according to its x value because there's an x value that's staying constant. In this case, the vertical asymptote is the equation x equals 1. In fact, we already wrote that here. It's these values right here. And the horizontal asymptote is the equation y equals and that comes from the y value of this dotted line. It also comes from recognizing that when we say this, we mean that the y values are 4. Not the y values of the function, the y values of the asymptote. Let's do some practice problems. I'm going to show you a series of conditions, and you're just going to work it out and then compare your graph to mine. Here's your first practice problem. Hit pause, and then when you press continue, I'll show you my graph. Great. Here's what I drew. Keep in mind that my graph may not look exactly like yours. In fact, I have a blue graph and a green graph to model two possible ways you could have connected the dots. If you need to see it for longer, pause the video. Here's your second practice problem. When you're ready to see my graph, go ahead and press play. And third practice problem. When you're ready to see the answers, go ahead and press play. And I was just having fun here. Obviously, you don't have to do this zigzaggy thing. What you have to do is vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. Okay, happy graphing.